Hey y'all, uh, I want to talk for a minute about welding cable. Uh, over the years, you know, I've worked with a lot of people and uh, a lot of contractors that's got their own machines, single hands and different people. And, you know, everybody wants to talk about how their machine welds and how good their machine welds. And they use this certain kind of machine and this machine will stack and that machine will dig and all this stuff. Uh... That's all fine and good, and, and I think that's a topic for a completely different conversation. The the thing that the only reason I'm bringing it up is that no machine will do that correctly with shitty cable. Uh, you got to be welding through good copper, and nobody wants to completely replace all their copper. You know, it's pretty common that. You know, some guys can get away with 100 foot of cable. They'll have 50 foot of ground, 50 foot of stinger. Some guys will have uh, more than that, less than that. Some guys will run a little longer on their on their stinger and, and shorter on the ground. Depends on what kind of work you do and, and whatever. But, you know, when if you buy your own welding cable, you're going to end up in a situation where your welding cable is going to get burned up your machine's not going to weld good because of it and you got to replace that cable and if you're you know if you're self-employed and you're doing that at your own expense nobody wants to uh, dull out that cash but listen here's something you can do you can rebuild your your cables to a certain extent and this is something that i've always done just by stripping back the cable that's ruined I had a nice lightweight whip on the end of my cable here on the super service truck and I ran over it. I ran over it with a man lift and, and messed it up pretty bad. But I'm, I'm fixing the end of it right now and I want to show you how I'm... When I talk about rebuilding cable, close to your stinger, your cable is going to get burnt up like this. And you see how that's burnt up and black on the outside. And when we try to open it up and look on the inside, there's no good copper. It's still burnt up and black. But what you'll find is that, you know, if you just take a razor knife and slit this cable open and start peeling it back, you can see as I go back, it looks a little better. We got nice looking copper here on the outside, but we got burnt up copper on the inside. And that's undesirable. So, you know, we keep going. Well, look how much nicer this looks. You know, this is, this is a lot better. And then when we look right here, it's not burned on the inside or the outside. This is good copper. This is what you want to be welding through. So, when I'm talking about rebuilding welding leads, now we never know when we start cutting how far we're going to have to go back to eliminate all that burn up lead. But what you'll notice is that that area close to the stinger, if you eliminate that, it'll get a whole lot better. And you can uh, eliminate that and also uh, solder on new copper. If you uh see the way i had this whip soldered on here and heat shrunk uh this is a smaller size whip cable and this is my bigger cable you can uh you know if you got a sometimes you might just eliminate say five to ten feet of cable and you'll get back to good copper other times if you have to eliminate a lot more or if you've eliminated five or ten feet several times you're you're probably going to want to add some. Don't throw away any of your good copper. Strip it back on each end. See what you got. If you got good copper, maybe you can splice some on it or splice some pieces together. You don't have to replace all of it, but that clean copper has got to be there. Or your welding machine is not going to provide the type of current that it could the good quality welding current, the, the ability to strike an arc fast, run wire good, stack right, dig good, see the adjustments of your machine as they should be. To, to, for all that to happen, you got to have good copper.
Lightweight stinger, lightweight whip cord, soldered onto our heavy cord. Um, I don't know what my total footage is that I'm running on this rig right now. It uh, these leads have been spliced together and rebuilt a few times. My guess would be that I've probably got around 150 or 175 feet uh, on the stinger and at least uh, at least 125 feet on the ground. When I worked in the oil field, you needed a long set of cables uh, to get through the rigs as the rigs got bigger, you know, on uh, these locations where they would have rigs that were set up to drill on air and mud both. There'd be a line of compressors on one side of the rig and a line of mud pumps on the other, you know, and with mud tanks in the back and all the other equipment on site. Uh, you know, a lot of times you'd need quite a bit of cable to get to where you needed to go to do what you needed to do. And then sometimes you'd have to climb up in the derrick uh and and do some welding and you'd really need long cables for that uh, other situations you know on construction sites and whatnot a lot of times contractors will run shorter cables and move their welders around um, but a lot of times on construction sites the weld machines aren't mounted to a truck a lot of times they're on a skid and and they'll just move them around with different types of equipment and Sometimes they'll move them around inside of a building on a cart with wheels, you know. Uh, different scenarios work out in different ways, but one thing's for sure, and the point of this is, um, you've got to have good copper or your weld machine's not going to perform correctly. If you're running burnt up leads, it's not going to, your machine's not going to weld as good as it should, and that's aggravating. Uh, you don't always have to replace all your copper to get good copper. Um, if your welding cables are getting burnt up, I think you'll notice most of what's burnt up is near the end. If they're burnt up all the way through, your machine's not going to perform well. But if you can eliminate some of the end, 10 feet, 5 feet, 20 feet, you know, shorten them up, uh, eliminate that burn up copper you can uh, definitely make your machine weld a whole lot better uh, and you can run really long welding cables on your machine if you've got good cables uh, and and also I wanted to show how you can splice cables together but when you splice cables together you really do need to solder you need to clean it you need to flux it you can use the stainless steel wire to hold it together. Um, I hope that you could see how when I spliced my smaller diameter whip cable onto the larger diameter welding cable, uh, I eliminated some of the center. I cut out some of the center copper from the bigger cable to, to, and then put the smaller cable inside and wrapped it around with the stainless wire. I hope you could see how I did that, that's a really good way to put those together. And if it's soldered correctly, it won't come apart. Um, you, could tow, you could tow your welding truck out of the ditch with that shit and it won't come apart. 
Uh, so that's a little bit on rebuilding welding cables. We got the whip cable on the super service and we're ready to go. Hey y'all, CB here, the No BS Welder. Coming at you with this t-shirt on because I wanted to show you the new uh, t-shirt, NBS Welding here on the chest. Got the American flag on the sleeve. NBS Welding on the back. Get a hold of Tina. Send us an email at nbswelding at aol.com. Get a hold of Tina. If you want one of these shirts, 25 bucks plus shipping and handling, she'll get you a shirt. So I'm plugging the shirts, and while I'm plugging the shirts and doing commercials, I just as well throw in my Thrive. Now, my Thrive system, if you didn't see my Thrive video, I can put a link in there and you can check that out later. Uh, the Thrive system is the supplement system that I've been taking. I'm on my seventh year. Uh, seven years I've been taking Thrive. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a supplement system. I start out first thing in the morning with these capsules right here. These capsules right here, this will get you turbo spinning. First thing, you get out of bed. As soon as my feet hit the floor, I take these two capsules right here and I drink me a glass of water. First thing. Then, within half hour to an hour later, I make a shake. This is a, a micronized powder. I'll put it in uh, about 10, 12 ounces or more of, of ice water. Shake it up real good. Drink that down. Whenever I take the shake, I put on a patch. Now, there's different patches. When you go to the site, you can see whichever one you want. Uh, this is an elite patch. Uh, this is the elite formula shake. There's also the standard formula. If you want to know the difference, I think the elite is geared a little more towards weight loss. And I think the energy from the capsules is a little more spread out. Uh, on the Elite, it's more of a slow release. So, uh, the Elite is the new one, and then there's a standard formula. Uh, I've, I'm taking the Elite right now, but I have, I've taken the standard formula for years. I took the standard formula for over six years. But if, if you want a supplement, if you're the kind of person like me uh, that wants a supplement system, you know... I said before, there's some people that don't take supplements, they don't watch their diet, you know, it doesn't matter if they exercise or not, and they feel good, sleep good, they look fit, and they don't have to, they just, they just, they're just like that. And there's one thing I know for sure about those people is that I'm not one of them. Unfortunately, I gotta take my supplements, I gotta pay attention to what I eat, um, uh, and I got to stay active or I'll gain weight. I'll gain weight and I don't feel good and, and, and that's no good. Uh, and nobody wants to get fat and lazy, you know. And as I'm getting older, you know, I've got to do a little more all the time uh, to keep myself. Man, I want to be right there. You know, I want to be on it. Every day I want to get up and get going and do it. Uh, and, and I, and I got to stay. I got to stay at it, man. So... Uh, it, it, the link it, it will be, uh, there'll be a link in the description of the video and you can find out where to sign up for the Thrive. If you sign up for the auto ship, you get a discount and don't freak out because it's auto ship. You can cancel it whenever you want. Uh, but signing up for the auto ship will save you some money. But this Thrive supplement system, that's going to be your vitamins, minerals, your probiotics, your prebiotics, CoQ10, glucosamine, uh, caffeine. But it's not caffeine like caffeine that's in coffee. It's not like caffeine. This caffeine, they uh, they extract it, uh, you know, from different ways uh, and different sources. It's not just like the the coffee caffeine. Uh, there's no crash with this. And if you follow this system, you get up, you take your capsules, you drink your shake, you put on your patch, 
Uh, avoid all other caffeine. You don't want to be drinking coffee or Red Bull. You don't want none of that. You don't mix this stuff. You you take your Thrive and 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 you'll get the energy and you'll stay active and you'll have reduced inflammation. Uh, you're getting all your vitamins and minerals and you're going to fill in those gaps, those nutritional gaps that need filled in. You'll feel better. You'll look better and be better. So. If you want a t-shirt, $25 plus shipping and handling, send us a request at, at uh, send us an email, nbswelding at aol.com. We'll we're taking some pictures of the shirts where we can uh, throw up pictures every once in a while with that email address in between the videos and uh, buy a shirt, sign up for some Thrive, get it on auto ship, get to taking that. And let's roll!